Gravity, and this is a joint work with Christian Pfeiffer from the University of Bremen and Manuel Hohmann from Tartu in Estonia. Uh, and since it's a very quick talk, I'm just going to point uh, the main ideas of the paper in a brief way. So first of all, I'm going to give a hint on the toolkit that I'm going to use. That's the coordinate free calculus of variations on manifolds. That's the correct setting that we are, must use when wanting to make sure that our theory is correct. Then I'm going to talk about the general framework for Pinsler based field theories. And here uh, I'm going to expose my main idea. Since we are talking about either L, the Pinsler function or Pinsler metric tensors as our dynamical variables, in any case, they are homogeneous. And this uh, obliges us to form. And insofar as time allows it, I'm going to uh, present a concrete model our concrete model that uh, also Miguel Angel talked a bit. That's at least about the vacuum gravitational field actions, starting from an idea by Pirani, plus the technique of variational completion. So I'm not going to talk about coupling to matter because it would take too long. First of all, uh, what is our toolkit? It's calculus of variations on manifolds. We are going to uh, formulate our theory on fibered manifolds. A fibered manifold is uh, by definition a triple consisting of two smooth manifolds related by a surjective submersion. So that's something more general than a fiber bundle in the sense that we have fibers, but we don't assume any structure on the fibers. They are totally free. We just have fibered coordinates. So the first n components here, x, y, correspond to coordinates on x. So this is the general setting for modern field theories, Lagrangian field theories, and physical fields are modeled as local sections of such a fibered manifold. In coordinates, just to have a hint, you have, say, space-time coordinates or whatever the base is and field uh, components that are functions of the base coordinates. So this is our setting fibered manifold and sections are interpreted as physical fields. Then uh, it's more convenient to interpret the Lagrangian as a differential form. So not just as a function as usually, but as a differential form multiplied by the volume factor. Uh, and then the action is obtained as a function uh, on sections of our fibered manifold with real values. Once a fixed a compact connected subset of the base manifold is uh, taken. Then what we get here is uh, the pullback of the Lagrangian, which is a differential form on the jet bundle by a prolonged section. What we get here is a differential form on the base manifold X, so it makes sense to integrate it on a compact domain thereof. The advantage of this is that we can interpret the variations of the action as lead derivatives. But not in an arbitrary way, variations are encoded in, a, in one parameter groups of fibered automorphisms. Uh, and a fiber automorphism um, is a diffeomorphism that makes the following diagram commutative. So it descends into a well-defined transformation on the base manifold or well, some open subset of it. The idea is that uh, such a uh, fibered automorphism must always induce a transformation on the base, and this transformation on the base only involves base coordinates, so no field is involved in the, what happens on the base. So what happens on the base manifold stays on the base manifold and does not involve the field variables. So with this, variation is indeed expressed as a lead derivative with respect to generators of such one parameter groups. And then a section of our fiber manifold, this is a field, is extremal or critical for the action if for all compact connected subsets of the base manifold and for all possible generators psi, which are compactly supported, so they vanish on the boundary of T, in particular, the variation of the action should be zero. And this in coordinates really leads to famous Euler-Lagrange equations. 
So this is our toolkit. Now let's see how we can apply it to Insular Space Times. So thanks uh, to Miguel Angel for uh, giving such a detailed and beautiful uh, description of Insular Space Times. So I'm not going to repeat the definition. Uh, as you have already seen, there are multiple definitions differing in details. Our theory anyway applies to any of them. So roughly, we have a four-dimensional manifold M equipped with a function L defined on a conic subbundle of the tangent bundle. So we have something like this uh, function depending on positions and tangent vectors and with real values such that the Hessian with respect to the vectors is say non-degenerate on A with Lorentzian signature on a possibly smaller subset T in A or on the whole of A, it doesn't matter too much. Here, um, just a caveat, X dot is just a notation for a tangent vector. So it doesn't in imply that we have a parameterized curve or whatsoever, it's just notation. The essential thing is homogeneity here. And of course, A or T, whatever domain we consider, must be invariant under rescalings, positive rescaling. This, this is a conic set, essentially. So this is our interpretation of L, roughly speaking. Now our point is, OK, we want to build a field theory which has L, or the metric tensor G, as our dynamical variable. And uh, the point which might not be obvious uh, from the first glance is that they are homogeneous functions and that constrains us. So we really have to think about how to accommodate homogeneity. So basically, by a Finslerian field, I will mean some function going from some conic subbundle of the tangent bundle to some manifold, which is acted upon by the multiplicative group of positive real scalars. For instance, and uh, this function should be k homogeneous in x dot. As a first example, we have the Finsler function, which is too homogeneous in x dot. Uh, kinetic gases, we, which we have uh, studied also, they are described by a zero homogeneous functions or uh, homogeneous D tensors or homogeneous anisotropic tensors. They are also described in this setting. And now the point is how to choose our fibered manifold. And the first uh, temptation is to use uh, the tangent bundle itself as our base manifold. The problem is that here we cannot have compactly supported variations. So imagine that you want to vary, for instance, L, uh, and you want to have zero variation on the boundary of the domain. But L is homogeneous, so what happens on the boundary will force what happens inside the domain. So we cannot really have compactly supported variations that falls down. Then uh, the unit sphere bundle approach or the indicatrix bundle as used initially by Christian Pfeiffer uh, has a problem, namely that if you want to use L as your dynamical variable, uh, the indicatrix depends on L. So you cannot really define fibered automorphisms. They must descend into uh, transformations of the base manifold that, that do not depend on our field, which is L. So this cannot be done correctly on the indicatrix bundle or unit sphere bundle. So the only re remaining variant is the projectivized bundle approach. And this indeed poses no problem. So we can really apply the classical variational principle. Moreover, homogeneous functions or tensors can be naturally described as sections of bundles sitting over this projective tangent bundle, actually oriented projective tangent bundle. This is constructed uh, by identifying as a single point a half line. So it's a set of directed lines, if you wish. This is our uh, base manifold. Uh, basically, a point on PTM plus is a half line on M. Uh, and what we get is a seven-dimensional manifold. Since M is four-dimensional, TM would be eight-dimensional. When we factorize one dimension away, we remain with a seven-dimensional manifold. And if we do projectivization just with 
uh, positive factors, what we get is orientable, provided that M itself is orientable. So we can integrate with no worries uh, on compact domains in PTM+. Uh, then the construction goes by the notion of associated bundle. Uh, PTM plus has quite a rich structure. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the slit tangent bundle, that's the tangent bundle without the zero section, there should have been a minus. Uh, it's a principal bundle over PTM plus with fiber R plus. Then uh, if we have a Finster space-time structure and we stay apart from light-like directions, then we also have uh, a canonical contact structure given by the so-called Hilbert one form, and this defines canonically a volume form. So we have also a volume form, which is naturally attached to the construction. And uh, if it seems com uh, complicated as a construction, uh, calculations in coordinates are simple because uh, essentially PTM plus is a Grassmannian and we have homogeneous coordinates. So we can basically use just coordinates as we know them from TM. Just uh, first, we have to make sure that our objects descend correctly into objects on PTM plus. So this is our base manifold. Then how can we describe, for instance, the Finsler Lagrange function as a section? Because L depends on pairs x, x dot in the tangent bundle, not on classes. Uh, so this is not so trivial. If you have zero homogeneity, then okay, you work directly on classes, x, x dot, but here we have two homogeneity, so this is not so trivial. The key point is that uh, homogeneity can be treated as equivariance. So we have essentially uh, R plus star as a Lie group acting on both the slit tangent bundle and on R. And L can be described as an equivariant map going from a subset of TM, which is A, into our fiber, fiber which is R. So this is uh, two homogeneity described as equivariants. And since we have equivariant maps, we can describe them as sections as an, of an associated bundle. So basically, we built the Cartesian product between TM and our desired fiber, that is the codomain of L, and factor away uh, this equivalence relation. So we identify uh, representatives which differ by such a relation. What we get uh, is a bundle with PTM plus as a base, which is good, and fiber R. And indeed, we can characterize L as a section. So uh, two homogeneous functions defined on such subsets A of TM and with values in R can be described uh, as sections of such an associated bundle. So it looks a bit sophisticated as a construction, but in coordinates, it really goes simply uh, as xi, x dot i, and l about uh, calculated on this. Now, a caveat, Finster field Lagrangians will be uh, differential forms on uh, a bundle sitting over PTM plus. So basis PTM plus, which is a space of direction. So our Lagrangian must be invariant under rescalings with positive factors. This is zero homogeneous, and this really constrains our degree of homogeneity. Now here, we have spoken about L as a section, but uh, construction can be extended to any uh, homogeneous geometric objects. And if I still have time, I'm going to now present a concrete model. Uh, this goes uh, from uh, L.S. Piranich field axiomatics. It's, it's, uh, more precisely, uh, it starts from uh, Piranich's idea that in vacuum, uh, geodesic deviation, the trace of geodesic deviation operator should be zero. So we are going to be minimal uh, in minimalist uh, in our uh, tools. That is, we are going to describe geodesics in the simplest possible ways in terms of the canonical nonlinear connection. Then we have geodesic deviation expressed by a Jacobi type equation. And we are going to trace this operator. What we uh, get is 
a function going to from the set of admissible vectors into R. This is too homogeneous. And this in, in the Lorentzian case is really uh, Ricci tensor contracted twice by the velocities. Root stated already in 1993 that this R should be zero in vacuum. But the point is that her, uh, her equation cannot be obtained by an action. And the technique we used was the so-called variational completion. Roughly speaking, given an arbitrary PDE equation system of any order, uh, we can always add a correction term such that it becomes variational, at least locally. And when applying this technique to its equation and taking into account that our Lagrangian should be uh, zero homogeneous invariant under rescalings, we got a unique answer. And this is a Lagrangian given by the function star. Uh, remarkably, uh, it's uh, Professor, uh, by work. Sorry, we, we, are, we have uh, one, two minutes more, okay? Okay, fine. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to finish in one minute. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, it was remarkably the one found by intuition by Pfeiffer and Wolfhardt in 2011, same as Chen Shen for positive definite Finsler metrics, but positive definite Finsler metrics are way simpler. So this was somehow found by intuition. Now we have confirmed with a solid background that, okay, this is uh, the simplest scalar that you, you can have in Finsler uh, gravity. By varying it, we get such an animal of an equation. It's a scalar equation that makes sense on subsets of PTM plus or subsets of TM uh, apart from light-like direction. So L equal to zero would not fit into the picture, but L equal to zero is so, somehow trivial as, as a solution. So it involves our Ricci scalar uh, derivatives with respect to X dot and the so-called Landsberg tensor, which can be described in many ways. Uh, one way is as uh, it measures the variation of the Cartan tensor along geodesics. Uh, this is a scalar equation, but uh, in Lorentzian spaces, we can prove that it's equivalent to the 10 uh, vacuum Einstein equations. And actually, the whole Lagrangian differs by the Hilbert Lagrangian by a total derivative and the volume factor. So that's it. Thank you.